Astor, Prophet of Doom, is one of the most mysterious parts of Age of Calamity, a game set in an alternate timeline during the Great Calamity. Despite his massive impact on the plot, the game doesn't actually reveal a lot about this new antagonist, only that he's a seer, one who can see the future, completely and entirely dedicated to Calamity Ganon. Today, together with Commonwealth Realm, let's take a closer look at this dark soothsayer. In this video, we'll cover the possible origins and history of Astor as seen in Age of Calamity, and in the counterpart video on Conrad's channel, we'll explore the possibility of the Prophet's existence during Breath of the Wild's Great Calamity. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look at the origins of Astor, Hyrule's False Oracle. Astor is introduced at the very end of Chapter 2, plotting together with Koga and Suga. It's in this scene that we first see the Harbinger, the version of Terrico which belongs in Age of Calamity's timeline. When the Terrico from Breath of the Wild's world jumped back through time, it was followed by Malice from a Guardian. Malice which was able to corrupt the Terrico which belonged in the past era and was dormant on Zelda's shelf. This machine became known as the Harbinger, a vessel of Ganon's malice. Throughout the game, Astor wields this malice, able to poison the sacred Korok forest, create malice clones of heroes, and even resurrect the Blight Ganons upon their defeat. He works towards the resurrection of the Calamity, and ensuring that the dark future from which the Harbinger's malice came from comes to pass. However, at the climax of the game, Astor is devoured by the being he was devoted to. The Calamity has no more need for its pawn, and so consumes him entirely. Astor's design calls back heavily to multiple previous Zelda characters, most notably the fortune tellers of A Link to the Past, with the purple hooded cloak, Aghanim, for obvious reasons, and Girahim, with the diamond-shaped patterns and red jewel. It's clear from his appearance that Astor has a strong connection also to the ancient Sheikah. He wears bracelets fashioned from the same strange stone as the guardians and shrines, and carries with him a device reminiscent of a gyroscope, a device which is able to project star signs not unlike a planetarium. The most striking, and least surprising, connection Astor's appearance gives us is of course to his master, Ganon. Not only does he feature the Gerudo emblem on his cloak, a connection to Ganon's near-forgotten origins as the king of the Gerudo, he wears a jewel on his forehead, something that's incredibly common amongst the Gerudo. This jewel, however, has a darker connection. It's an Eye of Malice, a symbol representing the darkest, most feral aspect of Ganon. So, Astor's design is a veritable tapestry of the history of the Calamity Ganon. His origins as a Gerudo, his current state as a being of pure malice, and his connection to the technology of the ancient Sheikah. And even a connection to the source of his hatred, Demise, with references to the design of Girahim. From Astor's character description in-game, we can learn a little more about this enigmatic prophet. For one, we know that Astor hails from a certain small village, though it's unclear exactly which village is being referred to. But more importantly, we get confirmation on a long-standing fan theory. Ever since the release of Breath of the Wild, it's been heavily speculated that the Fortune Teller, a character mentioned in the game's lore, who predicted the resurrection of Calamity Ganon and advised the kingdom to begin excavating the Sheikah Divine Beasts and Guardians, was in fact working against Hyrule, laying the groundwork for a successful return of Ganon with poisoned words. The basis for this theory was that, if this fortune teller had not advised the king to look for the Sheikah weapons, then Calamity Ganon would not have been able to seize control of them, drastically lowering the threat of his assault on Hyrule. Without the legion of guardians and the monumental power of the beasts, Ganon would have only had monsters and malice with which to wage war, 
threats which possibly could have been neutralised just by the princess and the hero. After Astor's reveal in a trailer for Age of Calamity, the popular opinion, one that I shared, was that the mysterious cloaked figure would turn out to be this fortune teller. And the fan theory suggesting that he was a double agent, working in secret for Ganon, would be proven true. While this isn't explicitly mentioned in the game's main story, it's heavily implied. Astor's title is The Prophet of Doom. He's referred to as a seer, and he makes numerous references to fate and destiny. But Astor's Japanese description doesn't just infer it, it almost confirms this. Thanks to a translation by Source Gaming, we know that this description reads, a fortune teller who lived in a small village in Hyrule. Entranced by the power of Calamity Ganon, he plotted for his return, but was defeated by Lincoln Pals and absorbed by the Calamity. The term here used for fortune teller, Uranaishi, is the exact same as the one used in Masterworks, the Japanese edition of creating a champion, when referring to the individual who predicted the Calamity. So it's hard to argue this now. Astor is likely the very same individual who advised the king to excavate the Sheikah technology. Astor completely exemplifies the role of Ganon's pawn, a character trope overwhelmingly common to the series. He's extraordinarily powerful, but only through borrowed power. He fights using the power of the Calamity Ganon, a dormant threat which is slowly awakening. It's worth noting that Astor is not Ganondorf, or his equivalent. He's an entirely separate character, one who simply supports Ganon and works towards its revival. The best candidate for the physical incarnation of the Calamity is still the emaciated corpse seen in the teaser for Breath of the Wild 2, a skeletal figure clearly meant to be Ganondorf himself. From the bright red hair, the Gerudo emblems and jewellery, and, in this shot, the muscular, bulky frame and large pointed nose of a Gerudo male. Features which completely rule out Astor as the identity of this corpse, which is a theory I've seen mentioned online. Astor's signature tool is his Sheikah Orb, an artifact he's hardly seen without. The orb is incredibly similar to a giant ancient core, though with some notable design differences. As we can see the cog teeth of a core inside Terraco, I originally assumed that Astor's artifact was the core of the Harbinger, the central processing unit of the corrupted Terraco. But later on, we see these same cog teeth inside of the Harbinger, meaning whatever this orb is, it doesn't belong to Terraco, present or future. Additionally, this core is able to project star signs, somewhat similarly to a planetarium, either in small, controlled spheres or across an entire area. Of course, as Conrad mentions in his counterpart video, Astor is an anagram of Astro, meaning related to the stars or celestial bodies. Being a fortune teller connected heavily to the stars, Astor is of course linked to astrology, a form of divination where the movement and position of celestial bodies are believed to relate to humans and events on Earth. Through astrology, many claim to be able to see the future, reading events that have not yet transpired by watching the stars. This is something that we know was of interest to the ancient Sheikah, a group renowned for their ability to see the future perfectly an ability they refer to as the site of the goddess Hylia. Constellations are marked on many walls and surfaces within shrines, and, of course, the Astral Observatory. Otherwise known as the Laboratory, the Observatory is a colossal room deep below Hyrule Castle, the site of the final battle against Calamity Ganon. It was designed to be a place from which the Sheikah could study the stars, perhaps, like Astor, to predict the future. If the reason the Sheikah studied the stars was indeed to predict the future, then the ancient device carried by Astor could have been created for this purpose. Not an ancient core, but instead, a crystal ball made from ancient technology. A small engine, like those which power the Guardians, designed instead to aid with the study of the stars. If Astor truly was the one to predict the return of Calamity Ganon, it's likely that he did so using astrology, using this device. We know that ancient relics have been studied for years before Breath of the Wild, predating the prediction of Ganon's return and the excavation of the Divine Beasts. Princess Zelda built Terrico while her mother was still alive, and it was only confiscated from her after the Calamity had been foretold, with King Rome believing she should focus on her training rather than tinkering with relics. 
Later, though, we see that this orb has a different purpose. Combat. Astor fights primarily using this device, using it to do everything from project shields to throw orbs of dark energy at his opponent. Surely, if the orb was intended to be the Sheikah's design for a crystal ball, it wouldn't have these offensive capabilities. Except, by the time of Age of Calamity, it isn't just a device used for divination. It's directly linked to the Calamity, a vessel for its malice. It's by holding the orb up to the Harbinger that Astor is able to see the future of its alternate timeline, a decisive victory for Ganon. Astor is able to absorb souls directly into this device, souls which are harvested to fuel the Calamity. And when the device is used to summon the Blights, it projects a large field of purple mist. It's not designed as a weapon or as a tool to summon beings, but it's being used as a vessel, a medium through which Ganon is able to channel his malice and influence the real world. Astor, as we see in the end of the game's story, is nothing more than a tool, a means to an end for the Calamity. Despite his delusions of grandeur, the Prophet of Doom was nothing but a pawn, a man out of his depth, dealing with forces he did not understand and could not control. His entire design reeks of a man fascinated with ancient relics and the wonders of a forgotten world. Even his cloak is battered and torn, likely an artifact from long ago. How, exactly, Astor became corrupted by the Calamity is unclear. Perhaps he discovered something which should have stayed forgotten, a relic of Hyrule's dark past, or perhaps he had always been poisoned by the beast's terrible influence. But regardless, Astor's devotion to Ganon led not only to an event which almost destroyed the Kingdom of Hyrule, but to his own demise, consumed, utterly and entirely, by the force to which he had dedicated his life. The fate of Astor was, ironically, foreseen not by himself, but by the hulking Suga, who mutters under his breath that the Calamity cannot be controlled. And sure enough, once Astor's usefulness has expired, he attempts to direct the Calamity, to order Ganon to do his bidding, but the Calamity works towards no goals but its own. It instead absorbs him, ending his existence. Symbolising the end of the Calamity's need for Astor, Ganon stomps on his orb, shattering the last connection between the beast and its prophet. Astor is one of the most enigmatic parts of Age of Calamity, but of course he wasn't created when Terako came back to the past, meaning he would have existed during Breath of the Wild's Great Calamity as well, just without the power of the Harbinger and Ganon's malice. For more on how Aster's story could have played out in the Calamity we're familiar with, check out my part of this collaboration. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.